guys, I'm a little bit behind. Um, so we're um, it's a week four now. We just started today of college basketball, and I gotta get some quick week three thoughts in first as we enter the month of December, a pivotal month for a lot of teams, pivotal, very pivotal month. For a lot of teams, a lot of teams made strides during Feast Week, and you know, you know, you know how things are. You know how things are during Feast Week. Um, there's actually not a lot going on tonight, so you know, um, as I'm looking at scores now, there's not a lot going on tonight. But there will be tomorrow because the ACC Big Ten Challenge is here. It is coming. It is. It is. It is ready. It, we're lit. We are lit. And uh huh. Cannot wait for this week because finally college basketball Saturdays are going to feel pretty damn good again. Because we got some basketball, you know, on Saturday, a couple, a couple of interesting games early Saturday, but throughout the week there's going to be some intrigue. Again, the ACC Big Ten Challenge, two doubleheaders on Tuesday and Wednesday night. You know, catch those on ESPN, of course. You have to. Uh, but these two doubleheaders right here are going to be very, very intriguing as the number two team. We'll talk about the number two team in the country first, Purdue. I mean, what can you say? They have looked they look, they look like the team they were expected to be this year. Just that damn good. You know, um, Zach Eddy, you know, for Purdue, he's going to be dominating. I, I can guarantee you the man's been dominating all season long. Uh, yeah, did did y'all see? Did y'all see that that insane dunk against Villanova? You know, not even last week. Yeah, I mean, crazy stuff. So you know, this man's gonna be dominating, and they'll be taking on Florida State for their challenge opponents from the ACC. It's an interesting Knowles squad with Malik Osborne. You know, you know, um, leading the charge for the Seminoles. But I think the Boilermakers might be too much. They, there's also Trivion Williams, Caleb First, and I mean Matt Painter's team. And I, I think I incorrectly called Matt Painter a player last week when he's actually the head coach. <laughs> or was it two weeks ago? I, I honestly I don't remember. But this team for Purdue, if they could do what they did against Villanova in North Carolina. Or was it Tennessee? I can't remember which team they took on. I know they took on Villanova. I forgot the other team. I think it was, I think it was either Tennessee or North Carolina. They took on first in a Hall of Fame tip-off last week, or rather two weeks ago, technically. No wait, like no wait, nine days ago. I, I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, this Purdue team looks sharp. Honestly, I, I think you know, as the number two team in the country, you know, they're just that damn good. Why don't we back up a little bit? Back up. Let's back up a little bit before we get back into these games. A um, couple of huge tournaments to battle for Atlantis. Um, Baylor, obviously, they ended up winning that tournament. But I, I got to give some props to Auburn, UConn, and Michigan State. Michigan State has found their way back into the rankings. We'll talk about them in a moment here. Uh, but Baylor, they dominated Michigan State. They they've looked like a team that's just been you know ready to defend their championship. They look like a team that's ready to defend their championship. And I'm surprised that there were a couple of stunners here. Yes, it, that includes UC Davis losing to a D2 for-profit school. But the real big stunners were Kansas getting stunned by Dayton and then Iona under Rick Pitino of all guys. Stunning Alabama. I mean, those were, some, those were two big games right there. Two big games. Um, the NIT tip-off, I think Iowa State won that one. And that game that they had against Memphis with Gabe Kalsher, my goodness, they dominated Memphis. They whipped them. They put Penny Hardaway's guys out back, and they shot them up. It, it, was, it was rough out there. It was rough out there for the Tigers of Memphis. Very, very rough. And then... Then you gotta go to the du you gotta go to the du Gonzaga game and the UCLA Gonzaga game. Crazy stuff. UCLA could not do anything against Gonzaga. They couldn't do anything. They got throttled. Like the Zags had a 20 point lead at half. They won by 20. And then you know Friday, late Friday night. Oh boy, what a duel this was. 
Duke and Gonzaga. Pound for pound, we'll do, we talk about Gonzaga a little bit more in a minute here because they have another big matchup this week as well. Uh, but man, what a matchup this Duke Gonzaga game was. Duke had the edge, you know, at times, but Gonzaga was able to claw their way back, get back into the lead, but then Duke was like, man, and Paulo Banchero was like, nope, uh, nope, we're going to steal this, we're going to steal this W from you. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, we're talking, we're talking Paulo Banchero was in the locker room with cramps, jogged right back in like he was Lamar Jackson, came back up in here. He had all he was already tearing things up, but he turned he turned things up even better when he came back in. That whole team was tearing it up. The Blue Devils are, and that's why they're in the number one team in the country right now. The Duke Blue Devils are crazy stuff. And we'll we'll talk about this Duke team here as they'll be taking on Ohio State in the other doubleheader game on Tuesday night. Um, as we all know, Paulo Banchero is the X Factor, but you've got guys like Trevor Keels, you know, I mean, there's just there's just so many players for Coach K's team. There's so many players for this team that can step up at any given day. Uh, for Ohio State, they've been kind of limping along through the season. They've had to have E.J. Liddell, you know, carry the load for them as there's no justice suing I know he's injured I mean Ohio State's going through a lot of injuries and stuff like that right now so things are not looking pretty and you know right now for the Buckeyes things are not looking pretty and this is this is a huge test huge test for Ohio State huge test you know Big Ten play in fact conference play for some teams are starting this week as well so I don't have any conference games on here for this week because they're just not intriguing enough for me to talk about right now. We'll get more into conference play type stuff when we get to January. But again, there's some there's some conferences that are starting play this week. I think I've updated you know my schedule a little bit for these games. You know, so things are gonna get interesting because I, I I think I have at least eight games planned to watch this week, including these double headers. Louisville, Michigan State. Let's go into that real quick. Let's go into that because Chris Mack, he's back. I didn't even realize he was suspended. I forgot what he was suspended for. He, he got off at the right time. You know, Malik Williams is that guy for the Cardinal. They, 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 I mean, Louisville has been a pretty intriguing team to, you know, look at throughout the season so far. Michigan State, last time I talked about them was in the Champions Classic. They still haven't cleaned up those turnovers. Still have not cleaned up those turnovers. They got dominated by Baylor, and I mean they 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 got through the, they got through most of the battle of Atlantis, but they got dominated by Baylor. Turnover problems still plaguing this team. Uh, I wonder what is those Spartans are going to do? Because I mean Louisville is always a tough out. We all know this. They're they're pretty much a blue blood at this point. I know people like to throw that term around sometimes, but honestly, Louisville is one of those teams that's just a basketball school by and large. You know, this is this is gonna be tough. This is gonna be a tough one. You know, especially with the with the the, the things that have factored in for Louisville coming at the right time. Michigan. Oh yes, Michigan. Somehow they're still ranked. They got blasted by Arizona. They 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 haven't looked they haven't looked great you know they haven't looked great they need a huge W they need a huge huge W uh, I forgot what their other loss was real quick but Hunter Dickinson and crew they need a huge W North Carolina they're coming in you know they've they played a pretty tough schedule so far and this is another tough one in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Armando Baco, Leahy Black still there, R.J. Davis. I mean, the, the, I mean, this North Carolina team should show out. Should show out against Michigan if, if things don't go their way, you know. Or rather, if things don't go the Wolverines' way, excuse me, you know. Um, this one's going to be really, really intriguing because, uh, I mean, there's just a lot of things, you know, hampering on this game, you know. Because, I mean, Michigan, you know, North Carolina, too. I mean, both these teams just haven't had, you know, the kind of momentum that I thought they would have so far this year. Uh, so it's going to be interesting because North Carolina, I don't think they're ranked anymore. And Michigan's barely hanging on by a thread. So 
this one's going to be really intriguing because I mean, the, 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 these games matter. These ga these non-conference games that I be talking about, they do matter. A lot of people don't seem to think that, but they matter. We all know they matter. If you're a true college basketball aficionado, they matter when it comes turning time. Set. Well, actually, hold on. Friday. There's a game on Friday night that I do have to mention here because Kansas taking on St. John's. I think I'm gonna take a peek at that because you know Pac-12 championships on Friday. So I need something else to watch with it. It just so happens that Kansas St. John's fills that itch for me to for me to have something else to watch because I mean Ochai Abaji, you know David McCormack. I mean this 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 Kansas team is still looking pretty good. I think the last time I talked about them was the Champions Classic as well. And St. John's, St. John's, I, 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 I'm confused. I'm confused. Why are y'all playing teams close? Y'all can't be playing close. The, the, you know, the wins they have so far, because uh, they, they, they got beaten. I know St. John's has a loss, but they've been playing close games lately. Really, really close games lately. So that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna be a big game, I think. You know, St. John's always a tough out. You know, can't, it's never e it's never easy in college basketball, as we all know. But you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are probably gonna be underestimating St. John's. But I mean, we all underestimated Marquette. And we'll talk about them right now as we get into those Saturday games that I was talking about earlier, because conference championship weekend, of college football. There's not a lot of games. There's not a lot of games in college football this weekend. They're, they're, they're big games, but now we got some college basketball on Saturday that can finally fit into the schedule, that can finally fit into things. And one of these games is going to be Marquette and Wisconsin. Wisconsin won the Maui Invitational. I know, crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. Huge matchup with Marquette. This is huge for Shaka Smart's Golden Eagles crew. I mean, the way, this, the, way the Golden Eagles opened up this season, they... They knocked Illinois right out the rankings. I mean, they they pretty much they pretty much knocked them right out with that, you know, playing good basketball, playing good basketball. Wisconsin, you you know, if you win Maui, you're you're in for a good time this year. You're in for a good time because I mean, they they got Jonathan Davis, who's been a breakout guy. Brad Davidson's still there, you know. This is going to be a very fun pairing with the Big Twelve Championship early on Saturday. Um, I'm also going to keep an eye on Michigan San Diego State as well, but I mean, again, we already I've already talked about Michigan, you know, because they they this that game is not going to be easy either. San Diego State is no easy out either, but Michigan they they got to get through North Carolina first. The big one, the big one on Saturday, you all, you all know, it, it's about that time for the Zags. It's about time for the Zags to go up against Alabama. Again, Alabama got stunned by Iona. You know, last week, and, and again, that was just crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. How they got stunned like that. I mean, with Alabama, they got a they got a pretty interesting squad. A pretty deep squads too. You know, you know, Jaden Shackelford, freshman J.D. Davidson, Javon Quarterly, Charles Bidiaco. I mean, some of these guys are back from last year, and and we all know Alabama was a strong team last year as well. And I'm looking, I'm looking at Gonzaga. You know, obviously that performance against Duke was otherworldly. You know, almost got the W. You know, crazy stuff right there. But they, they, they had some difficulties at times. You know, with Nebhard, Timmy, and Holmgren, they had some difficulties at times. And there was guys like Julian Strother that really stepped up. And I think this might be the same thing here because I mean, this is another big game for Gonzaga. You don't have many non-conference opportunities like this, you know, and you got to make the most of them. This one's a huge one, huge one right here. So that is going to be a big game late, you know, to pair along with some more college football. But I'll talk about college football tomorrow. And for now, let's enjoy this week because, you know, the feast, the feast continues throughout December. I, I got I got my schedule updated for things, so there's going to be a huge, huge amount of college basketball games being covered for the next couple weeks. I can't wait. I, I'm too excited. I'm excited for this week. The ACC Big Ten Challenge is always going to be, you know, a, an exciting time. 
Vegas. So, who do you think? Who do you guys think will win the ACC Big Ten Challenge, though? Because you know, you, you know how it is. Things get a little weird when it comes to these challenges. You know, surprising results happen, and. You know, what do y'all think about Wisconsin? What do y'all think about Alabama? You know, how do y'all how did y'all feel about the Duke Gonzaga game or the Duke or the um, UCLA Gonzaga game? How did you feel about those? Uh, anything else y'all want to talk about? Just go ahead and put that in the comment section down below. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell. I have no idea why there's no dislikes on videos now. That's a YouTube thing. So uh, yeah. It is what it is there. But with all that being said, I will see you guys in about 90 minutes to talk the NFL. The recap for the NFL this week. See you later, everybody.